Good morning. My name is Brad Wood, and I'm here in my studio, which is called Seagrass, in Los Angeles, in the 818. Um, I've been here uh, for 10 years. This is our 10th anniversary, actually, in this location. It's in my backyard. I have a tracking room over there, and this is the control room. Uh, I'm here today to talk about the uh, 5060 centerpiece, this little beauty right here. Um, before I moved to Los Angeles, I was in Chicago, and I had a, a couple studios there, um, and was producing records by Veruca Salt and Ben Lee, um, worked on a Smashing Pumpkins record, um, Liz Fair, um, lots of great Chicago bands, and bands like Sunny Day Real Estate, who are from Seattle, um, bands from all over eventually, and when we moved here in 2000, I worked at a bunch of great studios and made a bunch of great records by people like Pete Yorn and um, Sensefield, a bunch of great bands. But in 2004, I built Seagrass and needed to put my equipment into it. And as you can see, it's a decent sized space, but can't really handle a giant console. And frankly, I'm, I'm done with consoles. <laughs> so the 5060 uh, fulfills just about all the needs that uh, that remained uh, from my era of working on big consoles and, and now going to a smaller footprint. Well prior to the 5060 I needed a monitor controller, something to control um, uh, the sound coming off my Pro Tools rig and into my my analog here. I needed to control the volume to my speakers and I wanted a talkback section. Um, most of the products out there at the time didn't provide all of those things. They usually had some of them or, or half of them <laughs> or most of them and uh, they didn't particularly sound all that great. Um, when this came along, it literally fulfilled everything. Like it hit all the marks. Everything that I needed, it was there. Um, what I like most about the 5060 is that it's already designed with how I've been mixing for a while now and I mix out of Pro Tools um, using stems, meaning that I'll take audio um, in groups, drums, guitars and bass, vocals, those will all be separate. Um, and they'll combine uh, into a console. And I've actually over here in my rack, I've got the two earlier versions of the same situation well, for mixing stems. So the 5060 is the first product that I've come across that anticipates that or acknowledges that's how um, uh, I mix and has basically just crammed all these features in it that, um, that do what I want it to do. So um, this, there's four stereo faders. I've got drums, bass and guitars and vocals, and then a master fader. And what I like is that instead of having these uh, over here, I have them right in front of me, and it's twinned with the monitor section, master section, which sounds fantastic. Uh, the quality level is as good as any console I've ever worked with. So um, it's got a small footprint. It's, uh, it's offering all the things I need um, and have used for years, and it's added a bunch more stuff that I'm still discovering. I've had it for half a year, and I'm still learning about what it can do. So that's, that's what I love about it. I have the 5060 set up to receive my drum submix, and I do stereo drums, kick and snare mono, um, guitars, bass, uh, and any keyboards, and uh, stereo vocals. Um, I've run it this way for years, not through this console, but for years. And uh, uh, so it fits really easily into my workflow. It also has all these auxiliary inputs, which I'm just now starting to play with. And that's really great because I've got a bunch of gear over here that's been sitting around. I've got an analog synth that I use for processing during mix down. And it's just, just couldn't be any easier to plug that stuff in. So if I want to use an old delay, uh, an old spring reverb I've got mounted out in the studio um, and bring that back, you know, send sounds out to it and bring that back, it plugs in. I, I turn it up, it's automatically right into the stereo, uh, stereo bus. So on the monitor section of the 5060, 
I'm running out of the stereo master into a stereo compressor back into Pro Tools. And I usually will monitor on input um, so that I can hear the benefit of, of what's happening with this console. And it's actually affecting it, you know, in a really beautiful musical Neve-like way. Um, and uh, it, just, it just gets me closer to uh, my final mix that much faster, especially for records that I'm tracking as well. Um, I'm already thinking how I should be mixing by the time I'm overdubbing bass and guitars. Um, I use the silk button in red all the time. It just lives on this thing. Blue is nice. Um, sometimes I'll use it for individual tracks and print those tracks. But red for my stereo mix is amazing. And, uh, and I've been playing with my levels. How hard do I, do I push it? How often do the, <laughs> do the needles come out of the red? <laughs> I, I spend, they spend a lot of time way up there. And that to me is a sign of a, of a console with a lot of headroom. Uh, it's very musical. You can play it like an instrument, like any, any of the classic equipment that Rupert's designed in the past. It just has that, that quality um, that uh, it kind of asks you to, to push. And um, I don't know if it's technically the right thing to do, but when I'm bearing the needles, it sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> You know, I, I, I used to be a traditional one-to-one, -one, meaning, you know, a snare drum goes through a channel on your console, your kick drum comes out, goes through a, a channel on your console, every vocal has its own uh, channel out. I went to stems, meaning uh, stereo submixes, back in 2003. It was pretty organic, but at some point in 2003, I made the decision to go completely stems. But uh, that means I do a fair amount of automation, usually in my edit page. And I do a lot of moving room faders there. I also move faders here. So I, I, I think of the 5060 as a hybrid. And it, again, it's anticipated my workflow. Um, I mix in a hybrid way. I'm working on the screen with the mouse. I'm working here with the faders. Um, I'm pushing the faders to find a sweet spot on a drum submix. I do the same thing with the vocals. Um, sometimes I lower all the vocals in Pro Tools um, in order to have more headroom here. It's every, every record, almost every song is different, um, but it is a hybrid. You push a little bit here, you pull back a little bit there. And, and this guy has basically opened up more opportunities to find those things, you know, find that sweet spot, because it just sounds great. You know, low level, if you want it to be really clean, that's fine. I tend to want to push it kind of hard. The band Balance and Composure um, was mixed through this console. The song is called Sulky, and I wanted to show you some examples of, of how, to, uh, how to make best use of this console, at least as far as I'm concerned. So the first example will be with a lower level, not really pushing the console much, meters not pegging and uh, Master Fader is down. This next example is the master fader up pretty high and pushing, uh, pushing more level and starting to make those meters ping. This last example is Balance Composure's mix uh, with the um, Stereo Master Fader up, pushing a lot of level, 
the silk uh, button engaged, red silk, which is my favorite silk. As we like to say, I'm a red silk man. Okay, so thanks for watching, thanks for visiting. Uh, if you want to find out more about my work, visit bradwoodmusic.com. You can listen to samples of what I've done. Um, and please, check out the Rupert Neve stuff, it's great.